Okay. Yeah, I call that Moon Rover. That's that's good to go. That thing is is good to to go and do some stuff on the moon. Okay. Okay, we'll put that tab out of the way for right now. How heavy is this thing? Get my engineer out of here. All assembly 17. It weighs seven, so I've got to get a mass of 17 Kerbal mass units to the surface of the moon. Okay. Cool. Cool. I kind of like it. Yeah. It's a, it does look kind of Dalekish, doesn't it? <laughs> Especially from this angle. <laughs> Okay. 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 So uh, let's cover this thing up in um. Yeah, let's cover this thing up in our fairing. The base for that fairing go. Here we are. Uh, no, do not connect. I, no, I don't want you to connect sideways. I went. Wee. Wee. It's freaking out, man. It's got just so many at connection points between all these parts, it doesn't know which one I want. Um, there may be another brief intermission while I fight with this thing and try and figure out how to get it to do what I want. my plan here is and then I'll stick this engine to that and then I'll stick my payload fairing base to that oh yeah those wheels will fit in there uh, looks like we end up might having a couple pieces sticking out that's good that's okay that's okay this will work now I take Grab this engine, put it over there, get rid of these. Those were just a spacer, which I needed. I was working with this. Grab my engine again. And attach the engine to the middle. Oh, uh, yeah, the wheels are kind of sticking out. Yeah, it's kind of ugly, huh? Yeah, there we go. We'll attach it to that one. Now I'll grab the engine again, get rid of that fuel tank, which was just there as a spacer, and attach the engine to, not that one, and the wheels still stick out. You know what? At this point, I am going to say screw it. I'm going to say we're just going to uh, leave the, the wheels sticking out, and I'm just going to decide that it's okay. Okay, now let's start thinking about a rocket. A rocket to get this thing up there. So so the whole package that I'm trying to deliver to the moon is what, 17? 17 Kerbal Mass units. Okay, how's our staging looking like on this thing? So, yeah, this engine fires at the same time as we get rid of the payload fairings. Yeah, that should be good. I wonder. Yeah, yeah, that should be good. Okay, now I need to cover that up with a decoupler. Okay, so if I want to get this thing, get the whole assembly, what kind of weight are we looking at here now? Let's get my, my, my calculator piece, my engineer piece. I really like this thing. Yeah, stage 
two sh is enough to actually lift off. Lift the whole thing. That's nice. Okay. So the whole assembly now weighs 40 kerbal mass units. Um, let's go with how about this one. Or do we want the like the even bigger one? Two by eight meter. Yeah, I think that looks more reasonable. And more strutage. Okay, let's take a look at our 2 meter engines. That's the, our 1.75 meter engines are also good for this. 2 meter powerhouse. Standard 2 meter engine. Let me see this for 880. 825. Let's look at it this way. See so if we go with this one. Let's get our calculator out. Then, okay. That's pretty close to one. Let's see, we're going to use some boosters to actually get it off the ground. Yeah, what, this is one change that I, I went into. This, see, um, if you, there are some of these parts, these the heavy radial decouplers and these heavy and medium strut connectors that come with the, the Kyle and Winston Challenger pack, as they're so much stronger than the, the, the stock, uh, than the stock parts, the stock decouplers and stock struts. The one thing, the way, the way that uh, Kyle and Winston, the guys who put this together, the way that they balanced it, is they made them just ridiculously heavy. Uh, I decided I want to balance them. I, I'm going to, I made them not quite as heavy. They are heavier than just the, 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 the basics, uh, the basic decouplers and basic struts, but I, 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 I figured I'm going to raise their price. Their, their cost is, is way up there for whenever money is actually involved in the game. And we'll start with, let's say, yeah, we'll start with, like, put two boosters in the sides of this thing. Okay, where'd my calculator go? Stop that. Okay, curb. Ooh, this is not enough thrust to get off of Kerbin. See the thrust to weight ratio for Kerbin 0.7. That's less than one. That's very, very definitely not good. Yep, let's put some more fins on it. Keep it more steerable. Something like that. Oops, that's the wrong one. And something like that. Look all nicely symmetrical. I like it. I like it. Let's do some more ridiculous strutage. Okay, calculator. I like this Kerbal Engineer thing. I really do. There we go. Uh, Kerbin thrust to weight ratio of 1.9. Ain't that nice? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. Yep. Okay, so let's take a Good long hard look at our staging. There's their. Okay, hang on. First, first thing I want my liquid engine to fire. Bang, because I just like to throttle that thing up gradually at the start. And then we have our two boosters fire. Then our two boosters separate. And then, we think, then we have not much going on. With it. And then this thing just continues to burn for a while. And we separate that one. And then we have, at the same time, we 
actually tell you what, here, I want to... We'll separate that stage and get rid of those the upper upper halves of those so we don't be leaving those in orbit. Okay, so yeah, so the so that first stage drops off and we get rid of the payload fairings. And the upper stage fires. And then we finally get rid of the, the base for the payload fairings, and that actually turns the, the rover is then loose from the whole assembly. And then the rover's engine fires, and he's on his own after that. Yep, okay, here we go. Uh, Fredulous Kerman, Neomix Verpum, Razor Kerman. You're the next guys to... Uh, you guys have had kind of a rough time testing out the, the moon buggy, the, the rover, but you're going to go do it for real this time. This is a first for this series. This is just a, just a plain standard rocket. It doesn't have any wings. Uh, I wasn't certain I was ever ever going to do that, but, you know, seeing as how this one isn't coming back, I figured, you know, there's no reason to have any wings on it. Yeah, it's it's going to go to the moon, and it's going to stay there. These guys, they, they will eventually get back. These three, uh, I'll set up some kind of like a passenger shuttle. I'll send a shuttle to the moon. The, the, they're going to go establish the moon base, so let's hit it. Plane rocket, no wings. Weird. Turn SAS on. And we are flying. And the thing is just absolutely perfectly stable. This, it's not even trying to wiggle hardly at all. That's crazy. Wow, maybe that's why, maybe that's why normal people use rockets and they don't put wings on everything. Hmm, could be some kind of a life lesson there. So we got Neomex. Neomex is loving it. Fredge Lesson Razor, they're not loving it. Neomex, he's a good one though. <laughs> oh my god, I don't even have to touch the controls. I don't have to do anything. This is crazy. This is this is why people do rockets instead of planes. Wow. It's it's like it flies itself. <laughs> no effort involved. Crazy crazy. us off for a second to get rid of those uh, boosters because sometimes if you have the SAS on whenever you're, you're uh, staging things wiggles around and it bad things happen all right let's start very very slowly and gently easing this thing over towards the east Oh, this is so easy to fly, it's just absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> There's no effort involved. Okay, put that right at the 90, turn SAS on, let's take a look at that map. Apoapsis is up at 70, that's good. Let's just keep going for a while you can see here's our other there's the mum mapper on its way yep no surprises no it it just works perfectly doesn't it well, i i think that I'm going to have to go back to, to using airplanes. I think I'm going to have to resurrect my idea of the al always using the um, reusable launch vehicles with wings. The launch vehicle designed to, to launch into orbit and then come back and re-enter and land as an airplane just simply because this is too easy. It's crazy. Getting up there close to 80. There's our first, as our boosters falling into the ocean. Yep. Just cruising along in a perfectly efficient rocket. 
guys, it's, it's just looking like it's really unlikely that anything catastrophic is going to go wrong here. It's... I hardly know how to deal with it. Let's shut it off right then. Oh, I see him. Here, let's just burn the rest of it off. Okay. Get rid of that first stage. Get rid of the fairings. Get clear of those. See my rover packaged all nice and tightly inside of there. Don't that look kind of cool? Learned our lesson. So these, oh wow, see that just a little bit of extra burning I did. Still, yeah, now all, all this debris is going to go, go re-enter the atmosphere. So that's good. Uh, let's do some time acceleration. Get up to the ad apoapsis. Okay. What? I don't remember turning on the Muon detector. What was that beep about? <laughs> okay. Turn that off. Turn this on. Oh, no. It's. Man, I thought I fixed it. Oh no, it's draining out of the wrong RCS tanks. It's draining out of the, out of the, out of the lunar landers RCS tanks, and and not the, and not my upper stage. That's exactly the opposite of what I wanted. I'm irritated about that. This see this huge RCS tank that I put on this thing is absolutely wasted at the moment. Oh wow, the wheels are turning. I thought here, let's. I thought I had that. I thought I had the the translate control centered. I guess not. There we go. Okay, because so we usually want the moon to be at about this. You know what? We'll give it a little bit more time, just so. Well, I think we'll go around for another orbit. That's what I will do. Just to give enough room to separate it so we're not trying to deal with both of both the, the mum mapper and the moon rover i should call it the mum rover <laughs> yeah so i don't have to deal with both of those intercepting the moon at the same time you know what i just realized i totally forgot i totally forgot to turn the music on let's fix that problem music yeah yeah rock and roll there we go Okay, more time compression. Let's go for another orbit. Okay, I think that looks like that's right around a 60 degree. Okay, yeah, let's let's kill that time compression. Again, <laughs> why is it beeping at me? <laughs> okay, let's see if we can do this without. RCS because I don't want to burn any of that since it's draining out of the wrong damn tank. Alright. So right here, good. And we're burning. Lots of fuel of CSC party. I need this this for navigating around the surface of the moon. Really irritating that some of that stuff got used. Get out there past the moon's orbit, like 12, 13, something like that. Yeah, 13, 6 ish. Yeah, that's good. That'll work. Yep. Slightly more than half a tank left. I'm gonna. I want to use as much of this tank as possible for orbiting around the moon and do as much of the landing with that tank as I possibly can, and, you, and so I can save all all of this fuel and all this RCS in the in the rover for actually landing and navigating around the surface of the moon. That's what I want to accomplish anyway. Okay, 